today's show, find the courage to find the you that's been hiding. Brianna Tankersley lives for God, her family, and the opportunity to uplift women. Helping women to see that life struggles don't have to get the last word, and that God is calling them to shamelessly recover the women he created them to be. Liana is the author of three books and holds English degrees from Liberty University and West Virginia University. Liana and her husband, Steve, an active duty Navy SEAL, are currently stationed in Southern California with their three children. Help me welcome Liana Tankersley. Hey, Liana, welcome. It's good to have you with me. Thanks so much for having me. You have a book with a pretty wild title. Right? I know. Brazen. <laughs> Why'd you call it that? Well, you know, the um, definition of the word brazen is without shame. Mm. And the subtitle is the courage to find the you that's been hiding. I talk yeah. to a lot of people, women in particular, that feel like they have lost themselves or are losing themselves in the roles and responsibilities of their lives. Wow. And um, I wanted to write about what that's looked like for me and then how God has been kind of inviting me out of these places of hiding in my life and um, to live with less shame and less fear. Do you think women are more susceptible to that than men? Or like, do you and your husband ever talk about this? I think we are, as humans, all susceptible. If you look at um, the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis, uh, their initial reaction to, um, to the sin in their lives was to hide, right? Yeah. And God says, where are you? Mm -hmm. And they were hiding. I feel like God is always saying that to us right now too. Where are you? But I also think that for women, we spend um, many of our hours, many of us do, uh, caretaking for others. Yeah. And so uh, we can begin to feel over-responsible for everyone else and under-responsible for ourselves and lose ourselves a little bit in the, uh, in the role of caretaking for everyone else. Tell me your story about that, because it's really interesting. You guys went overseas. Yes. What does your husband do? Fill us in a little bit of the yes. story. Yes, okay, great. Well, my husband's in the military in, in the States, and um, he's in special operations. And so uh, uh, a few years ago, we received orders to move overseas to the Middle East. And at the time, we have three kids now. They, uh, we have seven-year-old boy-girl twins and a four-year-old little girl. But at the time, we had two and a half year old twins, and they said, okay, you're picking up and you're moving overseas. And as we were uh, uh, doing the move, I also found out I was pregnant. So we ended up having three kids in three years and accomplishing an overseas move. And so, um, you know, I don't think you have to go through moving to the Middle East to uh, be overwhelmed, but let no, me just say- That helped. <laughs> I was overwhelmed, that certainly helped. So we got there and, um, and, and you know, people don't always say this about adventures. Adventures are called adventures because they're a little bit crazy. <laughs> and it was a wonderful experience, but it was also, it was hard. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie, it was really hard. My husband's job was intense and caretaking for these kids. And there was a moment when we were there in the Middle East and um, I looked out of my car and the landscape is, is completely beige. Sand. 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 And Desert sand. sand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beige buildings, beige sky. And I thought, that's how I feel right now. I feel beige. I feel uh, like I have the blahs. And um, I sat in my car and um, was sort of thinking this external landscape is kind of matching my internal landscape. And then th I noticed that this gutter water started running right beside my car. And it was from someone who was washing, washing their car up the street. You know how that happens. And, it, and the, the gutter water is sort of murky and dirty and gross. And all of a sudden, these hot pink bougainvillea petals are floating on top of this water. And I looked at it and I said, that is so brazen. That hot pink fuchsia <laughs> floating on that murky water. And I felt like it was a promise. I felt like it was yeah. God giving me a promise. Yeah. Life is not gonna feel beige and blah forever. I'm gonna invite you out of this. I'm with you. And this is how I want you to live. Hot pink, flourishing, uh, and delighting in the yeah. life that I've given you. Do you think that it, you were feeling beige because your life was beige or the way you were looking at it? Like, which, what do you feel about that? Was it decisions yeah. you had to make internally or is it just changes externally? 
Well, that, that's a great question. I think it's probably both, right? We had been through an, sort of extraordinary circumstances, and we were, we were stressed and overwhelmed. And I think taking care of three small children in the best of circumstances is daunting. But having to do that away from family and a lot of support is yeah. hard. And so I think it was a little bit beige because I was isolated. Yeah. And I felt like I didn't have a ton of support. And I felt like I was in over my head a little bit. Um, but I also feel like what happens is then those, those toxic thoughts jump on the back yeah. of those experiences, right? Yep. And they tell us, you're having a hard time because you're failing. Mm -hmm. You're having a hard time because you're not a good mother. You're having uh, a hard time because you're not as strong as her over there. And I think we are particularly susceptible yep. to those voices, right, when we're vulnerable. Yeah, when things are hard is kind of when those things will muck with your head it's so seriously. Exactly right. And that's what happened. And so I... You know, here I am kind of getting assaulted, like, oh, how sad that you're having such a hard time taking care of your own children, that kind of a thing. And so uh, when we feel those feelings, it causes us to isolate even more, hide even more, because we feel like I'm Did not Did your enough. husband tell that you were going through this? My husband was going through his own set of things, <laughs> you know. Okay, yeah, that's probably yes, true. I mean, I think we were... The good thing is that we are a good team. We have always been a good team. And so we can kind of stand in the trenches together and do what we need to do. But he was um, in the midst of a very intense job with a lot of responsibilities. And so I think we were both kind of looking at each other with big eyes, like wow. um, we, we need to do our, the best we can do here, yeah. you know, and support each other. But yeah, I think he saw that we were both feeling a little overwhelmed by the circumstances. <laughs> and by also um, how these circumstances were um, landing within our own souls. You know, and for me particularly, just feeling like um, things have gotten a little beige inside. <laughs> but so God doesn't he, leave us there, right? He, he doesn't, doesn't leave, leave us, us there. there. So have you always been a believer? I have, yeah. I was raised in a Christian home, and um, I went to Liberty University. I saw that you've had some guests from Liberty here yeah. on the show before. Yeah. and. I have always been a believer, and so this was a time where um, I needed my faith more than any, any time in my life, and I feel like God really, he showed up. You know, after this experience in the Middle East, we returned home, and um, I, I think God send, lets us rest, sends us through times of recovery, and then right. he taps us on the shoulder and he says, it's time for those really beautiful parts of you that have been dormant to come back. So good. And I'm gonna show you how. And that's sort of what I've written about in Brazen, is how God said, it's time it's time to come out of hiding. Yeah. Let's take a break right here. When we come back, let's unpack some of the thoughts because you've got a lot of great chapters that just walk people through. Yes. Okay, this is what I dealt with. And I think a lot of people can relate yes. and get some help. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna be right back. We're talking today about this book, Brazen by Leanna Tankersley. You don't wanna miss this next part. I think God is inviting some of us to come out of hiding to find those parts of ourselves that are lost, that our true identity in Him, and we're scared. And we want to carefully bury it because we don't want to disappoint Him. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, 
where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Welcome back. My guest today is Leanna Tankersley, who's wrote this book, Brazen, The Courage to Find the You That's Been Hiding. Now, we were just talking a little bit about your testimony, but you had God kind of talk to you about one of the parables. Let's start there as we go into this today. Absolutely. So I was sitting in church recently, and um, I, I don't tell my pastor I'm telling you this, but I can't even remember anything that his sermon was about because God was sort of tapping me on the shoulder. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. I'm a pastor. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I was sitting there, and he said, uh, God said in my ear, you know, um, pull out your phone, dig your phone out of your purse, and I want you to read the parable of the talents. And I've read that story a hundred times. We talk yeah. about the fact that I was raised in a Christian home. I've heard and, and studied that, that story my entire life. And he said, pull it up on your phone and read it and the paraphrase the message. So I'm digging around on my phone and I read it. And um, what I was struck by in that, in that moment is, the, is what it talks about is uh, the parable about investment. It's a story about investment. And as I have um, gone through this journey of becoming more brazen, uh, stepping into my life a little bit more with uh, less shame, less fear, God has been talking to me about where I need to invest in mm, my life. Yeah. And you see that the, the master gives the first servant some money and he doubles it. He gives the second servant some money and he doubles it. And what does the third servant do? He buries it. Buries it. And the master comes back and he says, Here, here's, all, here's your money, sir. I um, carefully have hidden this because I yeah. didn't want to disappoint you. I think God is inviting some of us to come out of hiding to find those parts of ourselves that are lost, that our true identity in him, and we're scared. And we want to carefully bury it because we don't want to disappoint him. Wow. And so, um, you know, the parable is, I, I've always taken that as kind of like pressure, like I don't want to disappoint God. And it's not called a story about success or a story about disappointing God. It's called a story about investment. And so mm. I've been kind of thinking lately, and this is part of my kind of brazen journey. So what does God put in my hands? And how does he want me to invest myself? Not be afraid of disappointing him, not be afraid of failure. How does he want me to invest myself in what he's put in my hands? It's like with that parable, he's saying, I'd rather have you go out and try. Exactly. And fail. Take a risk. Than to hide. Than to hide. That's Because exactly he was right. really disappointed. That's right. He guy said, go hiding. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to talk to you right now. And, 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 what I, and what I read was, why are you so afraid to go out on a limb? I gave it to you. I gave right. it to you. So this has been really a part of my journey is reconnecting with who God made me to be and then trusting that what he calls me to do, he has equipped me to do. You know, every one of us is just wired to, to be a person who lives with purpose and contributes. You know, Absolutely. And that word is so big that, you know, that, it, that it, I mean it that way, that like where do you contribute? Where can you make a difference? And if we don't feel like we are, that, I think, is one of the biggest things that brings the blahs exactly. and the beiges. That's exactly right. And I think there are times in life where God says, come on, come on, come yeah. out a little further. Come on, you can do it. You know, step into who I've, you know, I, I feel like God whispers to me in, in my ear a lot, Leanna, I got it. You're not perfect. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You're beautiful. And it's okay. Like, inhabit these places that I have called you into. It's okay. I'm with you. You know, so we, we're sort of like that reluctant, stammering Moses. Like, I think you got the wrong guy, God. You know, <laughs> yeah. I say, no, I got, I got the right guy. Here we go. That is so true. So in this book, as you begin to unpack this for people, yeah. where would you start? For those who are listening and saying, okay, like... That's me. You yeah. just read my mail. Yeah. I'm so beige. I'm finished with this. Yeah. Where would you tell them to start? Well, I've divided the book up into three parts that have been really important handles for me. And the first whole section is talking about identity. You know, some of us believe that the most essential thing about us is that we're flawed. Yeah, that, um, that's true. That we are, we are done for. Yeah. And what I really walk through in the book is that the most essential thing about us is not that we are flawed or that it is our deepest and darkest issue. The most essential thing about us is that we're God's creation 
that we are image bearers, that he put his hands in the concrete of our souls, the wet concrete, and said, it's good. It's and amazing how people, all of us, feel like everybody else is better than us. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, everyone else is capable. Everyone else is good looking. Everyone else has got it together. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't fit in here because I don't have any of that together, and everybody fights that. That's right, and it sidelines us, yeah. right, when we're, not, when we're not connected with what God really thinks about us. Mm -hmm. So the first section is really going through our identity. You know, who are we? Who does God say we are? And to practice, one of the big things is to practice sitting in God's presence and receiving from Him. You know, I think it's so important to do studies and to read the Bible for information and to, um, uh, to read curriculum and that sort of thing. Once in a while, I think it's good for us to just stop and listen. God, what do you want to say to me today about who yeah. you think I am, about how you see me, about what you want for me, about how I can step into the purpose that you have for me? I find that people are afraid of quiet time because oh, the voices so that true. rise up aren't, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, life's amazing. The voices that rise up are so negative yeah. and so snarly and yeah. so yuck that we prefer yeah. to have the radio on the TV, on the iPad, on the iPhone. Isn't on, that the truth? And we just stay too busy so we don't think too much. That's so true. You know, I, one of the opening stories in the book is about that. And it's about how I sat down and kind of was bringing before God some creative ideas that I had of things I wanted to do. And immediately what jumps into my head, how dare you? Who do you mm. think you are? You know, and it's, it's so easy when we have gotten used to listening to those voices to think, well, maybe that's God. Maybe yeah. that's God sort of putting the brakes on, you know. And I've just come to realize that condemnation is never from God. God brings conviction, but God does not bring condemnation. So true. And so um, it's, it, it, you're exactly right. Those, those negative resistant voices pop up, and God wants us to sit and listen and let him fill us with his love and his yeah. comfort and his truth. And yeah. when we do that, we're armed to go back out and say, no, no, I can do this. You know? So good. And then I, I kind of move into after identity, this idea of finding our voice. Because for a lot of us, we have intuitions, we have ideas, we have instincts, mm -hmm. and we have desires. Mm -hmm. And we want to step into them. But we are so used to overriding those instincts that we have about certain situations or about, um, about things we want to do and quieting those voices, true voice inside of us. And so I talk a lot about what that's looked like in my life, to start trusting myself a little bit more, trusting the gifts God's given me, trusting the ideas that God's given me, instead of immediately letting the bullies scare me. Who are you and how dare you and who do you think you are? So before you could hear, you know, the Bible calls it that still small yes. voice. Yes, yeah. He's not in the explosions, the fires, the tornadoes. It's in that still. So before you can really hear it, You've got to kind of get your doctrine straightened up that he loves you, like you just said. Absolutely. He, your identity. If you don't get your identity figured out, all your quiet times are is aggravating. That's right. That's right. So that's why you put right. that first. Yeah, it's exactly. Get your identity absolutely. figured out. It's the foundation to everything. It is. If I can start believing the truth that God says about me, then I can step into some of these areas in my life uh, with, with strength. Right and knowing, okay, this is the truth. But before we before we do that, we have to we have to start sitting with him and, and saying, okay, God, uh, show me who. I, you know, I I think some of us believe we're the sum total of our issues. That I That's am true. I am divorce, or I am yeah. abortion, or I am depression, or mm -hmm. I am um, a sadness, or whatever it is, loss. And it's not true. It's not true. And you know, a lot of people over the years, depending on which denomination you've grown up with, they really talk a lot about this intercession. Uh, and to them, it's fighting with the devil or it's pleading with God. But the only thing I can find in the New Testament when it comes to warfare is thoughts, imaginations, mm. reasonings, strongholds. It all has to do with you maintaining this faith of believing what God says yeah. about you. Because nothing can stop you in what God's called you to do except you. That's right. The devil's been defeated. Yeah, that's God's right. not going to do it. And so this warfare that goes on is take those thoughts captive. Get rid of these reasonings, these imaginations of you're limited. There's no way God's going to use Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you're not going to just, like, you didn't just defeat this once years ago and now you're free. <laughs> this is a daily <laughs> oh. stay on top of it. Would yeah. you agree? Absolutely. You know, St. Benedict has this beautiful quote that I have, like, posted all over my house practically and it says always we begin again because wow. this is exactly what we're talking about yeah. i i will come up against these who are you and how dare you and who do you think you yeah. are all the time and i will ha be reminded of god's truth for me and then tomorrow wouldn't you know the assault <laughs> happens all over again yeah. yeah and so we have to begin again and, with and, this and the other thing is is that for you to move on to the next season that God has for you, you're yeah. going to be a little incompetent because it's a new season. Yeah. And that makes us feel like we're not 
going to be able to do it either. Absolutely. So leaving one season, whether it's single to married, married to kids, or it's being a mom, then it's writing books, then it's speaking on television. Like yeah. you've, you're moving into new seasons, <clears throat> and it's like every new season, <clears throat> excuse me, you are dealing with a fret, which is why the mercies of the Lord are renewed Absolutely. every day. Like yeah. you just Absolutely. so well said. We have to begin again, and, yeah. we're, and especially in these seasons where we're very vulnerable. I'm a person that would love to arrive. I'd love to check it off the list. Okay, I don't, I don't deal with these toxic thoughts anymore. Right. Done. Finished, right? done, <laughs> sealed. I'm never no. dealing with that again. No, but it, absolutely not, not. And especially as you're saying, when we move into seasons where we're a bit more vulnerable, we're open to that attack. Do you find that reading, uh, I know all of us should do devotions, but is there specific kinds of teaching books you read, biographies or teach, that help you to continually keep your mind yeah. fresh and changing? Yeah, I read the Psalms a lot right? Yeah. Because this is a person's honest outcries. And so I read the Psalms a lot about um, these, a, a person being honest about what they're going through before God and being vulnerable and asking for God to show up. And then I often read, uh, I li read a lot of memoir, a lot of narrative of people mm -hmm. who are practicing this in their right. lives and are being honest about, right. okay, this is what this looks like in my life. The challenges I'm facing, and also how God has shown up, the stories of victory. Yeah, that is so true. Because I find, you know, they say faith cometh by hearing and hearing yeah. by the word of God. Um, I find that, and, and some people think it's just the Bible that does that. But you know what, getting around people oh, yeah. who are forward focused, mm -hmm was phenomenal. Getting into a church that's forward focused, yeah. getting, you know, getting around friends, finding friends that are like that. I find all of that very stimulating. And you yes. get around the wrong people or the wrong yes. groups and you're fighting 10 times harder to get your head above water because right. they're like Job's comforters. Right. <laughs> they're right. just, you Not know, helpful. die. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I'm reminded when you're saying this about the story of the friends that take um, the paralytic to Jesus and yeah. lower him through the roof, right? And it's like, it's no fun to be the guy on the stretcher, right? No. Like we want to be the guy on, the, on one of the four corners that's carrying someone, the hero. the hero. And sometimes we get to be the hero and sometimes we are the guy that's being carried, that you know? That uh, is very good. But uh, that is a big, that's been a big part of my journey is having people around me who are saying, no, actually what you're telling me right now about what you're thinking, what you're hearing in your head about how you're not enough and how um, you're sort of done for and you're sidelined. I don't believe that. I don't think that's what God has for you. And, and lay down on the stretcher. I know it's not comfortable. I know you don't want to do it. And we're going to carry you to the feet of Jesus. Wow. And we're going to participate in your healing. And for so those of good. us, when we have people like that that come around us, it changes us. I'm with yep. you. And we need that, especially when we're in those beige times, yep. when we can't see it for the landscape. You know, we can't see the forest for the trees. Very good. I often tell people this way, an answer to your prayer is often another relationship. Mm, wow. Someone yeah. steps into your life, directs you, you know, kind of confronts you, loves you, and just helps us. I like that. I love that that yeah. story. You know, there's going to be four or five friends going to pick you up sometimes. That's right. And you, I don't think a lot of people like that part. No. Like you said, we'd rather be the guy carrying the, I'm going to help you. you Absolutely. Know, be help it's no you. fun to be reduced. It's no fun to no. go through a season where we're in need. You know, I, this is really where this book starts. Is, and I understand that. Like, I think when someone picks this book up, I want them to know, I understand what it's like to feel like I don't have my bearings in life right now. Very good. And it's going to take some time for me to find them. And that's one of the way God does it, is by bringing, by bringing someone to help you along. So our time is already up. We'll have to do oh, another you're show. Absolutely. But thank you for being with me. Yeah, this thank you so, so much good. for having me. If you've been listening to me and Leanna, we're talking from this book called Brazen. And it's about the courage to find the you, the you you know is there, the you you really want to rise up, the you you really want to live life through. This book's going to take you through step by step. You get a copy. I'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. 
One thing I really love about this show is that I get to welcome all kinds of great guests who all have a unique message to share. When Leanna was sharing about finding our real selves in Christ, I was reminded of how many Christians misunderstand who Holy Spirit is. You know, I remember years ago when I was younger, I would spend some time in prayer, and, and as I did it, I thought Holy Spirit's job was to remind me of all the things I wasn't doing right and all the things I had done wrong, and it made praying not real enjoyable. But then I found out that His job, now that I'm a believer, was to remind me and show me who I was because of Christ and in Christ, and that Holy Spirit inside of me is encouraging and showing me who I am in Him. So, you know, Spirit contemporary, which is what we say when you are going to share the gospel with people. It needs to be communicated in a spirit contemporary way, spiritually alive, spiritually potent, but filled with God's presence, knowing His Word, but then in a contemporary way, which means the ability to connect to whoever you're talking to because you speak their language, you understand their situation and issues. It's not condescending and arrogant. And this spirit contemporary gospel, it needs to get around the world. Many people have heard about Christianity and have become turned off. Many people have heard about Jesus, but heard about Him in the wrong way. But when we're able to communicate in a spiritually alive, yet contemporary, relevant, real way, people are so so attracted to that Jesus. And you know what? We need help with that. I would love to have you join us for $30 or more. I'd love to give you this gift and just send these CDs that'll teach you about being spirit contemporary in your own world. But your gift is going to make it possible for us to reach a world that is dying for the real message of Christ. And there's an urgency to get this message out there. Our world is falling apart without Christ. So go to your your phones right now. And for a gift of $30 or more, I want to send you this three pack. I believe it's going to be an incredible blessing to you. And you, you're going to see so many people's names written in the Lamb's Book of Life and making heaven because of your gift. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Leon welcomes author Dr. Greg Jantz on his timely topic of raising boys by design. Boys require motion. And so that constant flipping the pencil and driving you crazy, um, that actually serves a purpose.